everyone it's colin and today i'm going to give you my first impressions of my new 2021 harley davidson pan america special i'm also going to tell you how much i ended up spending after adding all the options and accessories it might surprise you for those of you new to the channel this is my second harley in the garage and my first is this right over here it's a 2017 street glide special and i absolutely love this bike and i've had many great miles on her now my upcoming plans are to do several videos on the pan am from my top pros and cons to all the riding gear i picked up for the bike and how it rides on and off road now spoiler alert for you it's an outstanding ride so let me introduce you to winston yeah that's right i named my bike uh the name winston comes from characters from two movies and you might have seen these one is pulp fiction and the other is from the john wick series in those movies both characters named winston were very cool and collected yet had a lot of power when needed and that's essentially this bike now my street glide special is named alexa i gotta stress that alexa so i apologize in advance if it just went off while you're watching this now i've always wanted to get into adv riding and uh, when harley announced this back in february i was sold and i put down my deposit and a fun fact here i actually put my deposit down i think it was a day or two after they opened the pre-orders and i was number 489 and they only did the pre-orders for the first 500 so i got lucky there now the bikes were supposed to start arriving in the dealers by may uh, but mine actually didn't end up coming into the second week of July. Now, I've only had this bike for, I think, about a week, week and a half now. And I only have, I think, 160 miles so far. And I'm in that damn break-in period. I ended up going with the gauntlet grade. I dig this color. Now, there's nothing wrong with the other colors, that, but this one just suits me. As I walk around this bike, there's been one word that has been very prevalent in my vocabulary recently. And that word is back order. I know many people are dealing with the same issues with stuff taking forever coming in. And I believe there's a new metal that's being used to make all these parts, and it's called unobtainium. It's a rare metal that comes from someplace in Nebraska or somewhere around there. And uh, obviously, I think a lot of the accessories that I'm waiting on are made with that metal. That or uh, Harley basically didn't anticipate the demand. Uh, I totally think Harley under underestimated how well these would sell. At least that's my take. On a serious note though, I have some items that are on here that I won't get until October. So let me show you the bike and what I put on it and what I have still coming. This is the special version. It has the uh, 1252cc Revolution Max 60 degree liquid cooled V-twin engine. And it gives you 150 horsepower and 94 torque at the crank. Uh, I know it has that variable valve timing which lets the cam change position allowing the cam to be optimized at low and high, high RPMs. Uh, depending on where you are in the rpm range uh, the frame itself has three aluminum subsections and aluminum swing arm that are all connected to the motor it's easier to handle due to the motor being a stress part of the frame it has semi-active suspension that just automatically preload to uh, 30 percent sag it has the olein steering damper which i can get a shot which is right in there uh has brimbo brakes and the Showa suspension. It has the RDRS enhancements like corner enhanced linked ABS, uh, traction control, and hill hold assist. Now, a couple of my friends, uh, they I don't have it on this one, uh, but they have it on some newer models that they have, um, and they love it. They swear by it. So I'm glad that that has it on it. I like that it has this adaptive lighting. Let me turn this on real quick so you can see it. So right now, you notice it's not on, so it only comes with your main light right here and then your turn signals, uh, but that adaptive comes on. So I'm used to it because like with this one, the adaptive light always stays on, but with this one, this only comes off when it, when you, I think it's activated, it's like 8, 15, and 23 degrees, it's a series of three lights that turn with you and kind of give you more illumination, but it's, it's a good little feature. So let me walk around the bike, I'm going to turn this back off and uh, show you what I'm putting on it or some of the things that I've already had and some of the things that are still coming. We'll start on the bottom here. This is the standard skid plate. And uh, to me, it's junk. It's not that big. So it's pretty small. And then now Harley is saying, that's the voltage regulator right there, the little black thing sticking out. Harley is saying that they've done tests and that the skid plate should hold up but honestly i i ended up getting the uh it's on back order but i ended up getting the bigger one which covers that completely and it goes back a little bit further i already put on i don't know if you'll be able to see that it's kind of dark 
but the radiator cover so that's a radiator cover that is an option as i walk through the bike here um the pegs so these pegs are made for like circus performers the the ones that came with it which are exactly the same size as the rider this comes out if you still have those but look how small those are so i took those off and i got the 80 grit and that's these right here the muffler guard for the muffler which i'll go over in just a second uh the muffler guard is an option or excuse me an accessory so that did come in and that's on i changed out the big one well there's two big ones i did which is the side bags and the top case from a cost standpoint and the exhaust so i changed it to the street cannon a screaming eagle with the carbon tip and it's obviously titanium and stainless steel uh it's nice much better sound let me turn it on real quick hopefully i'm in neutral i'm not sure if i am so i'm gonna have to walk around the bike here and see if i am still in neutral we'll know in a second look at that whenever you watch videos when people do like videos of like hearing exhaust you can never get a true assessment what it sounds like. So I can tell you it sounds sweet. And it is lighter. When they say lighter, I think they say it was 42% lighter than stock, which only equates to about eight or nine pounds at the end of the day. Uh, so it does make the bike lighter. However, when I picked up the spoked wheels right here, which is a factory option. And uh, so there's two factory options you can get on the special. Uh, one is the spoke wheels which is I believe $500 and then the adaptive ride height, which I'll talk about in just a second. Uh, but the spoke wheels weigh more than the base um, rims that they have. I think they're the mag wheels, if I'm not mistaken. So it ends up balancing out. I think the bike weighs a little bit more. I think these are like 17 pounds more. Don't quote me on that. Now I'm 6'4", so I really don't feel the impact of the adaptive ride height as someone that's like shorter. But I can tell it stops. I think it lowers you about an inch and a half, two inches. Uh, but you can feel it when it stops. So I'm getting all three types of bags. I'm getting the side cases, which go right here again, back order. Uh, the side cases and the top case. So right now, the only thing that's come in right now is the top case hardware, which you can see is already installed on here. Now, when the hardware comes for the side cases, I think they're called the aluminum bags or aluminum uh, hard cases, panniers, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I have to take this off, put those on first, then reinstall this, then put the top case on, then put the side bags on. Because right now, I'm so spoiled having a tour pack and saddle bags and then like riding this thing. I'm like, well, this sucks. I don't have any place to put anything. So right now, what I've been doing is tying like a little backpack to this, uh, just strapping it down until I get the stuff in. It works. Uh, but I am going to get all three of those. So the top case, uh, the two side bags, and I'm getting those in black. Some other things that I am waiting on, um, I'm getting a tank bag. So the tank bag is going to go right here. You might have seen it in some other videos. Uh, adds a lot more space. Um, if you see right here, I actually hardwired a, the Garmin, uh, was it Nubo uh, XT? I think the name of it is. I always get it backwards. Um, hardwired it to the battery. So that really wasn't that hard of an install. I just ran it all the way down, down here and then hooked it to the battery. So it's always on. Obviously, when I'm off, I take this off and it disconnects it. Uh, and then I also bought um, one of these uh, tack form foam mounts. On that one, I have a tech mount, but I went with uh, tack form on this one, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it. So let me turn this back on here and show you a couple of things I'm doing over here. So risers. So with the risers, guys, this is your standard risers. Now, if you're tall or gargantuan like me, you need to probably get tall risers. When I say it, maybe anything over 6'2", because um, when I lean over the bike, um, I am leaning a little bit more than I should. And now if I had two inches more up, which is what the tall risers are, again, back order, not in yet, that should help. The downside to that, I don't know if you can tell by the shot, I'm going to end up covering a little bit of the screen, even though the screen adjusts, but it doesn't adjust the way I need it. So by having those tall risers, that's going to be a downfall for me. I'll still be able to see it. It's just kind of a pain in the ass that I have to do that. I wish this was a little bit higher. 
windshield right now um ah jury's still out on that the windshield's okay uh, i know they make a what an 18 inch one which i've heard not too glowing reviews on they say it's distorted and it looks like absolute garbage um, but right now i'm getting buffeted probably right above right at my eyebrows so all i need is probably two more inches and that would resolve that jury's still out on that that's the only drawback that i've seen really that's impacted me the most um, but other than that i love how they give you the option of adjusting your uh, clutch or your brake on both sides so like right now that's set to one i don't know why i have it on one that should be like a three the uh, screen itself I'm not going to go into everything on it because there's a ton of videos out there on it. Some people say it's hard to read. It's not. It's simple. I love it. You can put little widgets, which I did over here. Like in the corner, I have like range over here. I have front tire, rear tire pressure, your voltage. And it's got a place over here that says headset. So you can connect to your uh, Cena or the Cardo if you have one of those. So that way you can have music or you can get your GPS through there. I did not like the Harley app. I think it's on your iphone or android that does your gps I, I just i didn't like it was clunky and i had this so i didn't figure to hook it up that i'd always have gps because this does not have i think most people know this does not have built-in gps one of the things you might have heard before on this bike is that the usb-c which is right there it's not a usb it's a usb-c uh, wouldn't work while you were riding it only worked in accessory mode which sucks but they had an update where they fixed that so now they fix that with a software upgrade at my local dealer which is all american and now as i'm riding it's always charging the phone uh, they have all different types you probably you know say i have all types of ride modes you have your rain you have your sport you have your road, you have your off-road, you have two customs on here. Uh, I've been using mainly the road. I've done sport several times too. The sport by far is just silly power. Uh, you're getting your full uh, max potential of the engine doing in sport mode. But honestly, using a road, it's pretty fast too. But if you really want to... Uh, there's ways of customizing this bike where it can be like super, super fast. But for me, I'm just enjoying it and... I love riding it. Uh, let me go over a couple last things and I'll wrap this up. And I want to tell you guys how much I spent on all this because it will surprise you. So radiator guard right here. I already talked about the skid plate I'm putting down here. I don't think I'm going to get the lights. I'm not doing those lights. Every accessory I've had, I'm either waiting on or they're already here. So some things are here, some things are not. And again, that's just part of the game. Once they come in, I'll get them all installed. So let me break down for you guys how much all this cost. Now the bike itself was $20,000 and on the website says 19,999, it's 20 grand. So it just sounds better, 19,999. Then once I added the adaptive ride height, which was a thousand, spoked wheels, 500. So you just added 1,500 to it. So now I'm at 21,500. Then you gotta add all the fees and taxes. And before any of the accessories are added, I was out the door and that's, you gotta love Maryland taxes at $24,000 before I even add anything. Okay, now I actually ordered, now I'd say half of them are on here and the other half are still on back order, but I had 13 accessories. So the 80 grit peg, I already showed you. The high flow air filter, which is actually kind of hidden back there. So a side note, when you get, uh, so I got a high flow air filter plus this, which is essentially a stage one. You don't need a tuner. A lot of people might not know that. I had to find that out because I thought you needed a tuner if you were doing any type of stage upgrade, but you don't. And they haven't been advertising a lot, but they do actually have, I believe, a stage three for this too with the cams. And that's the same thing. It's like built into the bike, so you don't need an extra tuner. So there you go. You get educated here. So the air filter itself was $80. The exhaust right here, 925 bucks. That muffler guard right there. 160 the top case now this is the top case hardware but just the top case itself which you do not see is 550 dollars that hardware 150 the top case or excuse me the side case the panniers for both of them the pair 950 dollars the mounting hardware that's going to go right in here to hold them both in place uh 290 the tank knee pad i'm getting 
So that is going to go right here. It's a big pad, so that helps like when you're standing up or you're riding. It gives you a little bit more uh, comfort. Um, the uh, tank bag, so that's the bag that's going to right here. Obviously, that hasn't come in yet. That's 240. The tall risers I mentioned, which is going to raise that up two inches. 180. That radiator shield, which is right down here. 150 bucks for that thing. And the skid plate to end off, which that is the stock one right there. Uh, that's going to cost me 350 bucks. So add all those up. Anybody want to take a guess? You're looking around $4,300 in accessories. Add that to the $24,000. I'm now spending close to $28,300 to have a mostly fully loaded ADB bike. That's a little bit different from that $20,000, which is the starting price. But hell, this is how I look at it. It's worth it. I only live once. You know, I knew going into it that there was going to be a lot of money that I was going to put into it with accessories. Uh, but I wanted to be realistic, realistic with everybody and kind of explain that, you know, people think, oh, I can get this whole thing for 20000 and then not have luggage and not have like the skid plate, not have a couple of those other options. Uh, they do cost a little bit of money. But once it all comes in here, it's going to look sweet. And I'll be able to uh, take this bad boy out and really go long distances with it. And I'm looking forward to it. So hopefully this video was helpful. Now get out there and ride. And uh, hopefully I'll have these new videos to you in the next couple weeks. I look forward to putting some out with the Pan Am and the Street Glide. And uh, now get out there and ride. Be well. And I'll talk to you guys soon.